Now to a story that sounds a lot like the plot of an Indiana Jones movie. In the late 1980s, Afghanistan was in the grip of a bloody civil war. Fearing priceless cultural objects would be destroyed in the crossfire, staff from the National Afghanistan Museums hid thousands of items in a bank vault. For years, the items were presumed destroyed until the Guardians revealed their secret to the world. Now, West Australians have a rare opportunity to see these treasures for themselves. Lucy Martin with this story. Our history and our culture, everything was with these treasures and we all put our lives at risk to keep them. Behind this collection of coins and crowns is a story of remarkable bravery. Would we make those sacrifices and be prepared to be so brave in the face of threat? To, for our own cultural heritage. One, you hope you'd say yes, but it's still an act of bravery. Decades of civil war and foreign conflict have taken their toll on Afghanistan. Countless lives have been lost and thousands of priceless artefacts stolen or destroyed in the crossfire. In the 1980s, there were different factions and they were fighting amongst each other. That's why we found it was not safe for these valuable things in the museum. Saifi was working at the National Afghanistan Museum in Kabul when the fighting intensified in the late 1980s. He grew increasingly concerned the museum would be looted or destroyed. We decided to hide all these treasures to be safe. So in 1988, he and four other employees spirited thousands of objects out of the museum and other buildings. They hid the most valuable items in Kabul's presidential bank vaults and swore to protect the treasure with their lives. My life was not so important because I accepted the risk. It was our national asset and our history for the new generation that was very important to me. Saifi and his colleagues were each given a key to the vaults, but told no one of its existence. To be caught hiding such valuable objects would have meant execution. The staff working in the National Museum, including Saifi, put their lives in danger. The risk was that they would be hanged, still they kept their culture and history safe. But the key holders, as they were known, couldn't save everything. About 70% of our items were lost during this uncomfortable time. We also lost three million people. But beside that, we also lost our history and our national assets. Thousands of items were looted from the museum in the early 1990s. The remaining objects were all but destroyed when the Taliban bombed the building in 1993. For 16 years, it was assumed the hidden treasure had also been destroyed, until 2004, when the key holders somewhat reluctantly revealed their secret to the world. It was not an appropriate time to reveal the secret because it was not a settled government, but it happened and I was happy the world knew we are a country with a lot of heritage and history. Most of the Western world had assumed they'd disappeared forever. So to re-see them and to know they were there was amazing. But also then, with the tour, to have that opportunity to actually physically see them is quite mind-bending. From tomorrow, more than 200 items will go on display at the WA Museum. They include priceless burial jewellery, ornaments, coins and glassware from all over the world. Some pieces are 4,000 years old. This, I think, is probably one of the most, for me, one of the most exciting and interesting I've worked on. And we've all thought that it's perhaps also the most elegant exhibition we've had in a considerable period of time. The WA Museum's Head of Anthropology and Archaeology, Dr Moya Smith, is hoping the collection will help West Australians see Afghanistan in a different light. I think we've all talked before about that 
dreadful feeling that all you think about Afghanistan is war, but to see these, it's to put Afghanistan in an entirely different context and to realize there's this wealth of cultural heritage that underpins the things that people still do, still value. Saifi still works closely with the museum, while Komjo is part of a new generation working to preserve his country's culture. It does not only belong to Afghanistan and the people in Afghanistan, it belongs to the outside world. Even you can find your history connected to that treasure, so it belongs to everyone. But we are proud to look after it and take care of it. They're hopeful Afghanistan's current regime will continue to support their efforts. It was our national treasure for Afghanistan. It's our history, it's our background, and now the world knows us through this history.